Hello, 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 and welcome to It's All Good. I'm your host, Latavia, and back for another episode. And this week, I have another special guest, and she's a little extra special because it's my sister, Miss Jay Monet. Welcome. Hello. You good? That's that's just that's the energy going to give me. I give you all of this. I said and you hello. Just said hello. Anywho, Hi. how? Anywho, um, well, welcome and thank you for being taking some time out of your busy schedule. I know you got 50, 11 things going on these days, uh, but do appreciate you. So I want to uh, jump right into it. This is March. March is Women's History Month. And I want to, like I said, say this, doing my part to celebrate us, celebrate women, um, women who come before us, as well as, you know, women who are making history right, right here and right now. But before we get into that, uh, I start each episode with what I like to call a gratitude moment. So Jasmine, let me make sure I use your actual name in case people are not already familiar with you. Um, what is something or someone you are grateful for today? I'm grateful for rest. I think that it is underutilized. It is often overlooked and without it, you cannot function. And I actually was just praying earlier today. I was like, God, I literally want time in every day to not only focus on you, but to just sit still and be at peace. Like um, where we used to live out the window was like a big group of like trees and I loved sitting on the couch and just like reflecting out of that and I actually was like God the next place that we go I want to have that same view like of where I can just look out because I honestly I love nature I don't like being like sleeping in it like camping but just like hiking oh. and scenery and stuff like that I really love it's super peaceful so I wanted that same area and this earlier today when I was sitting on the couch just so happens in the backyard is a big group of trees that I can kind of just look out and reflect on. So I was doing that, but yeah, I'm grateful for rest. Um, I'm hoping that I can begin to utilize it even more um, because yeah, a whole lot going on nowadays and sis is tired. I understand. And I'm, I'm happy you added that little disclaimer about the love of nature. Cause you have me confused. Just just for about 2.5 seconds. But anywho, I enjoy, uh, I would say I appreciate nature as well, the beauty of it. It's right. always like, to me, that is just a reminder of like, oh God, yeah, you, you, you did this. You created all yeah. this. Like this morning I was walking and finally was able to do it without a coat or jacket. Hallelujah. You know, that that is what I'm grateful for. The fact that it is is actually starting to warm up and it seems like it's for real because I went out for a walk and I took my hoodie, but halfway through, I was like, oh, I could take yeah. this off and I'll be all right. Um, but what I, I guess kind of what brought me that to, to that is as I was walking, I was there was what there was a really big bird that for a few seconds, I thought it might be trying to attack me. I don't know. It just kept f coming close. But anywho, I say that like, I saw birds and squirrels and all these things running. And it reminded me of, I think it was Matthew 6, if you don't. Know, why do you worry yeah. about where your food, where your money, or your clothes, or anything like that? Like, why are you worried about that? Because the flowers, the birds, all the animals, like they, they literally just be out here without a care in the world. At least it looks like life. it. Yeah. And yeah. they're good. And it was just like as I was walking this morning, it was like, okay. Well, all righty then. Let's let's plug that in and you know it's gonna stick this time for real not gonna get dislodged I feel like sometimes it's like that little straggly piece of hair that the little fly away is that is how me and knowing that I don't need to stress about where you know how everything's gonna work out like I know that yeah. it's all good and it's going to work together for my good but it's the, the day to days the, the minutes in the moment that concept keeps I would say it is my fly away strand that literally just came I don't out of nowhere. But anywho, the reason that we are here today, um, 
Well, actually, I'm sorry. There's something else I did want to share in terms of being grateful. I'm grateful I actually got to see you in person yeah. uh, this past weekend and to, to celebrate mom. Uh, yeah. She turned 65, which still don't believe it because she doesn't look it, but I still think she's lying about her age. Uh, I mean, she might be. Certificate thingy. I could be wrong, but I don't know many 65 year olds that still look that young. I mean, don't get it twisted. She does take very good care of herself, like with the multitude of supplements that she takes, but yeah and but I mean the that exercise is eating Wait, neither one of them look their age and so it's like I'm grateful to be able like I said to being able to see you to celebrate her and then it's also like oh that means I too I too can look like that when I get in my 60s um, yeah. because neither one of our parents look their age nor do they move like what or even just what we I would say quote unquote we thought or think that oh. someone in their 60s looks like because I think even that is changing as well. But um, so like I said, when March is Women's History Month and I appreciate women and I think I love when women are supporting one another. And so you being not only a woman, but a woman in business um, <laughs> and I would say a woman of a few different, of multiple talents that I know of, and I think people who are familiar with you know about, but for those listening, if you have been listening, you'll know that Jasmine is, this is, she's a repeat guest, but for those that said this may be your first time, I'm honored to introduce you to my sister. So Jasmine, if you would just tell everybody a little bit about who you are and what you do, a little bit. Let's see. Um, I'm learning that what I do is not who I am. So who I am, <laughs> I am a daughter. I am a sister. Um, I'm a child of God. Like, that's my heart. Um, I am a soon-to-be wife <laughs> in about 55 days. I am a dog mom as of recently. Um, and I like to say I'm just the girl next door, to be honest. Um, I do have a lot of giftings and talents and I will say callings, but ultimately what I truly love to do is I just love to laugh and be around family and friends. Like if I could do that probably every other day, then I would. And I say every other day because I need my time to be by myself um, as well. There's solitude in that just to sit down and just be by yourself and reflect. But as far as what I do, I am a um, Air Force vet. Um, I am the owner of Salon 2911 and I am a certified scrum master as well for the professional attributes. And aside from that, I'm active in ministry at church. Um, yeah, my, my schedule is pretty full <laughs> to say the least. And I'm currently in school and I'm hoping this is my last semester for quite some time. I said before this is Ty Red Ty Red well you know we really appreciate you squeezing us into your very 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 busy schedule and like I said I, you do a lot of things um and we don't have enough time to talk about all of the things that you do but for those who are not familiar I guess could you just tell us a little bit about what Salon 2911 is and so what it means 2911 is um, my baby um, vision God gave me back in, I, I won't even say back in 2018. I've always wanted to own my own salon ever since I was younger at that point in time. Um, it was like, oh, I just want to own it. But then as I got older, I was like, well, I'm going to go to cosmetology school as well. So I can kind of know the ins and outs. Um, and so 2018, stepped out on faith and opened up Salon 2911. It is um, named after Jeremiah 2911. Um, for those who don't know the scripture, this is your opportunity to dive into your word and figure it out. But for those who don't, um, it basically is where I know the plans that I have for you to prosper you, um, give you a future and bring you to an expected end. And um, I wanted to cater that towards um, women's health and um, hair care and scalp care, not just women, but men as well. Um, and that launched me on another path to actually become a certified trichologist as well. 
Um, a trichologist is an individual who specializes in identifying hair loss, scalp disorders, and diseases. We kind of play the liaison between the cosmetologist and the dermatologist. So that's another thing that I do as well. So that's what Salon 2911 is. I currently have another stylist um, working in the salon with me. We are currently looking to branch out um, and grow our team even more. So if you are listening and you know anybody who wants a um, great atmosphere, very professional and fun environment to be a part of, hit me up. And that's pretty much the, the bulk of it. We are located in Charlotte, North Carolina as well. Cool, cool. Well, I, I, I'd love to help, but I don't have those problems. That's not my qualifications. I can sweep. I do a decent job. I help you organize. I, I, I lend my services when I can. Yeah, but you definitely trademark and all that. Well, not trademark yet, but you help get us registered and all that stuff. So, yes, yes. I, I do that too. I try to stay in my lane. Uh, but well, that's great. So, I know that the last we're now what like officially two years into this pandemic um i know that there were some bumpy roads or some challenges and i think some are inherent to anyone owning or running a business uh mm -hmm. but i would say that the pandemic definitely added some additional challenges especially because initially you had to close for a period of time yeah. but just kind of in light of all of those things, uh, like I said, there's just, there's challenges in life in general, but then there's definitely, there's some challenges that are just inherent in being in business. But I know you said that God gave you a vision in terms of why you, the initial opening the salon, but kind of throughout all of the different things that have occurred since starting your salon, you know, I would say even from the decision when you decided to become a licensed cosmetologist, I know that that was not a straight linear path, that that was, there was some ups and downs even with that. But I guess through all of that, what has, like, what's your why? Why do you, why do you keep doing it, keep coming back for more? <laughs> That's the punishment, I guess. No, um, I, and I've noticed even over the past um, year or so, my passions have shifted. Um, when I was in a counseling session, I was like, you know, I don't even know if I want to do this anymore. Like, if I'm being completely honest, that's the first time I said that out loud. Um, and in the discussion, she was saying, well, is it that you don't want to do it anymore? Or is it that your passions are just shifting to other areas? And I was like, you know, that's true. I love the beauty industry. I love to be able to teach when I'm actually you know, talking to my clients or my patients behind the chair. I light up when I talk to them about their hair care and what they're able to do and stuff like that. So my passion, honestly, is teaching and, and um, educating women and men on, you know, just so many fallacies that are out here um, in the age where YouTube is so huge. So many people go there to get their source of information. And I'm not saying everything on and YouTube is poppy, poppycock because it's not. You have people that use that as a platform, but there are some stuff out there that is just so far off, so outlandish. And just because it worked for their hair or their scalp does not mean it's gonna work for yours. So my passion really is just to educate um, and enlighten, maybe not so much staying behind the chair so much longer because cis feet be hurting and it's a <laughs> lot, it's a whole lot. Um, I don't think, the everyday person understands just what a cosmetologist actually is. It goes beyond just doing hair. Like, especially if you own your business, you're the marketer, you're the accountant, you're the, the psychologist, you're the counselor, you're the, the person to lean on. And at the end of the day, after, you know, pouring out, pouring out, pouring out, a lot of times you're not getting that, um, your cup is not refilled, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, I would just say my passions are shifting towards mainly educating and not so much just styling at this point, but I really wanted to fill a void of what I wasn't really seeing in the beauty industry. Um, I was uh, listening to an audio book earlier, Holier Than Thou by um, Dr. Jackie Hill Perry. She's absolutely amazing if you've never heard of her. Um, but basically, when she started the book, she quoted Toni Morrison saying, if there is a book that you want to read that you haven't 
found yet, and I'm paraphrasing, write it yourself. So in the beauty industry, I wanted to create that lane where you can bridge the gap between professionalism and the beauty industry. If I'm being completely honest, especially in um, Black culture, there's not a lot of professionalism when it comes to salons. You can be sitting in a salon all day and your appointment was at eight o'clock that morning and you're not even getting seen until 3 p.m. and your whole day is gone. Like personally have experienced it myself and the type of, of women that I wanted to cater to, you know, the professional woman, not just the professional woman, but women in general, don't nobody have all day to sit in a salon and be aggravated and upset because you made an appointment, but they're not getting to you. You know, it was just a lot of lack of um, consistency for one, lack of consideration. And so I wanted to bridge the gap of professionalism into the the beauty industry, having that place that women can go and it be an oasis for them, not just giving you a style, but giving you the education that comes behind it. Because it's like, okay, great, I'm leaving out here and my hair is slayed to the gods and back. But when I take this style down, how am I supposed to take care of my hair? Once I take this style down, is my hair going to be breaking off? Am I going to have a super duper dry scalp? When I do have scalp issues and, and concerns, what do I do? When my hair is thinning and shedding and breaking off after I just had this baby, what do I do? So um, those are the things that I wanted to kind of look at and I do look at and focus on and, um, and let women and men know you're not alone with what you're going through, um, especially when it comes to the hair loss. I see more people with hair loss and scalp disorders than people realize and they think that it's just them, but it's not. So that's kind of in a nutshell what I wanted to create and have created. Right. Well, I can definitely, well, I know that you're passionate about this, but I feel like people watching and listening can also hear the passion comes through, coming through and the commitment to that. And I'm sure your clients appreciate that as well, because like you said, it's not, I don't want to mess up the tagline, but I know that it's an experience coming to you so long. Yes. I know that it, it is an experience and you talk, you just, you essentially just walk through what people can expect in terms of like, yes, you come in, we're going to take care of you. You're going to leave out leave looking nice, but mm -hmm. I want to also make sure you know how to maintain this on your own and in between. And Lord knows I can't stand the salon where I'm there all day. It contributed, I wanted to go natural, but those were those experiences also contributed to me learning how to do a lot of things for myself, um, specifically like doing my hair and trying different styles. I did attend YouTube University for natural hair. Uh, so I get it. I have definitely tried a lot of different things um, prior to joining the sister lock world. But um, like I said, I, I love in general, just hearing people talk about what they are passionate about and, and how they have found a way to incorporate their passions into their day-to-day -day life. And I see you have a shirt that says purpose, and it's just a matter of figuring out what your purpose is and how you can walk in that. And for me, and I think I talked about this on a previous episode, but learning that what my purpose is may not always line up with the vocation. Absolutely. And so, and you, you, you touched on this early in the sense of the fact you said you're learning that what I do is not who I am. That is very big to me. And that has been big to me for a long time, especially being an attorney, because a lot of times people associate, oh, you're an attorney. Okay. Oh, so then you do this because you're that, oh, you must be this way. And it's like, no, I am a, per I'm a person. <laughs> All right. I thought about Cat Williams and Friday after next. Um, I am a boy, Damon. No, but I'm a person and I've been a person before I was a person before I, you know, went to school and trained to become an attorney or I, before whatever that it is that you do. And so it's like understanding that who we are, we have to know who we are and get comfortable with who we are so that we can then show up in our vocation or occupation as well as for the people in our lives so that we can fulfill that purpose. And, and I guess another aspect of that is me learning that it's not 
uh, uh, getting to a certain point, but that process. Right, um, it's continuous. And I was having the conversation um, most probably like maybe a month ago that it's important for us to realize that just because, you know, I'm, I'm a cosmetologist today doesn't mean that I have to be a cosmetologist tomorrow or I have to be one six months from now or next year. Like as people were constantly evolving and just because you were called to a certain place in this season doesn't mean that you're supposed to know or you're supposed to do it in the next season. You know, dad always talked about don't outstay your welcome, right? Don't outlive the season that you're in. Don't stay too long, but don't move too quickly. You gotta have that, that right balance. And you don't have to be a lawyer your entire life. Like, I think that was drilled into our heads in like earlier generations. Like you, you go to school, you go to college, you're in this one career, you retire, you die. Like, and that's not, like who wants to live a life that I literally, I don't even like doing this anymore, but because I committed to being X, I have to do X until I retire and then I leave this earth. And it's like, no, a lot of people are gifted in so many different things. And so be okay with letting go of this particular thing to walk into the next season. And I think you'll be able to make a greater impact doing that instead of just being stuck right here. Exactly. And I would say our generation and definitely those young, I don't know what they're called, YZ. I don't know what the generations are called now, but I do know that the concept of working at one job for 20, 30 years is no, I don't think it's the norm anymore. And at least it's shifting. And I know I, ad I admire people who have been able to be in the same, not necessarily literally the same job, but the same company or career you know, within that same kind of lane or, or career field for 20 30 years I love it especially but they also don't offer pensions like they used to there was an incentive to, to stay, stay there long, yeah with the company for for x number of years because you knew at the end of that you had a pension mm -hmm. and I have not worked anywhere longer I think my longest bid anywhere has been two and a half years um and, and a half years. <laughs> hmm? and my longest was six and a half years with the air force and that yeah, was military you know, so that's different yeah i'm saying yeah. it's a little different but still but people there are people who don't stay in that long either mm -hmm. so it's i think it's a combination of industries are changing well you know clearly the world is changing but then also like you said people understanding that hey i don't have to limit myself i'm not limited to this one thing i can we do have, we have the privilege of having options. Um, mm -hmm. And and I, I can say that now, I, I believe that the workforce is starting to adapt to that. Mm -hmm. Everybody kind of was forced to adapt to some things these last two years because Zoom and Google Meet are like the normal forms of meetings or communication these days. Mm -hmm. But just kind of like, and looking at how things shift and you mentioned a uh, quote by Toni Morrison earlier, but are there any women that, or I should say, who are the women that you have looked up to or been inspired or motivated by uh, over the years, either in terms of to, to be in business or just, you know, in terms of like, hey, I, I like how she's doing this. I like how she handles herself or just anything of that nature. I wouldn't say that there is a particular woman that I look up to. I mean, I think there's traits of different women that I um, that I appreciate. Um, I've learned just in the past, and I would say probably since 2019, as I've gone through the ebbs and flows of business ownership, to not necessarily admire individuals and the reason I say that and this is just for me I can't speak for other people but just for Jasmine um transparently speaking I struggle with comparison a lot and that's something that I literally have to kill on a daily basis because I'll see something and I'm like dang god like why why 
do they get to be in this position or, or why do they have this? And it seems like I have yet to arrive because I have to get over that whole timeline thing, which is a bunch of poppycock within itself. Um, and just reading different, um, I don't want to say stories because they actually happen, but reading different accounts in the Old Testament about how old like these individuals were and certain things didn't happen for them until they were like old old like mm. case in point Abraham like mm -hmm. he had Isaac so he was 100 you know what I mean mm -hmm. like his lineage didn't start until later on so I have to get up past the, the whole timeline but I don't take the time to admire I appreciate um different attributes of women because I know it doesn't matter at the end of the day what Madam C.J. Walker did, right? It doesn't matter at the end of the day what mom did. It doesn't matter what um, Michelle Obama did, right? At the end of the day, it doesn't matter in regards to what my story is going to be because what I have to learn and what I have to accomplish and how I walk out the outlined destiny for my life is what matters. And so I have learned to stay in my lane and say, okay, God, what is it that you want me to do in this season right now? Because even if I was in the same, there was this one stylist who um, I just like, she was like the, my bread and butter. It was just like, oh my God, you were able to accomplish all this stuff. You had all this going on. And I found myself idolizing her. And I said, wait a minute, let me take a step back. Because even if we started at the same time, went to the same school, had the same amount of uh, clients, same amount of staffing, all of that being the same, our roads are still going to be completely different. And just because she was able to accomplish something with these sets of skills that may not be what's right for me you know mm -hmm. um everybody's journey is different and I'm using the beauty industry as an example but it applies in other areas a lot of people thought I was just plum fool crazy for leaving a six-figure position and opening up a salon with never truly having for real for real been an assistant in a salon before and never and having zero clients like that's outlandish you know logically speaking but I knew what God had told me to do and what he had called me to and as a believer we have to and I'm not trying to make this churchy but we have to get in the mindset of just because the world did it and it worked for them doesn't necessarily mean that's how we're supposed to do it so that was a long way to say there's a lot of women that I admire and I said some of them, but at the end of the, or I should say appreciate, but at the end of the day, I kind of try to just stay focused on where he has me because I can dip into um, them becoming an idol and that's not what I want it to happen. You, you did that, that was a lot, I'm, I'm processing more so in the sense of, I think it's kind of where you, you said in the sense of, yes, because the, the tendency to compare, mm -hmm. the danger of comparison is kind of what led you to kind of down this road of kind of reassessing how you look at or evaluate, I would say other people in general, in this case, specifically other women, um, and having an appreciation for them or different characteristics or traits that they have. Uh, I think that's important because like I said, I know for myself, there's definitely a tendency to compare. And I, I think some of that is societal uh, because it's a competitive society or just competitive nature. Mm -hmm. But I guess in, and I know that this isn't something that you like one day you woke up and you're like, that's what it is I know that it was a process but I guess I'm thinking for those who are listening or watching and whether they are aspiring cosmetologists trichologists or just as you know aspiring you know if it was like a young girl watching a young woman watching or even someone older who's thinking about making that shift I guess in everyone is everyone's journey is different but I yeah. guess for those watching or listening to you in life, what is something that 
I guess you could share with people in terms of how to get that. And even for someone who may not be a believer or not a believer yet, like just what is, <laughs> no? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I did that yeah. because I'm gonna be speaking from the standpoint of being a believer. Um, well, let me, let me, let me digest or unpack um, the scenario from not being a believer, right? Because we was born and bred in the church. And so it's sometimes, even though I have my back slid sliding, I won't say moment, years. Um, but I think at the end of the day, which you have to come to the realization that out of everybody in this world, you are the only you, right? Like you are mm-hmm. so significantly special and designed and created that what you are supposed to do, nobody else can do it but you. And I think if you get that realization, that will start the journey. And in that sense, it's okay to be selfish. It's okay to like boost yourself up, not from an ego standpoint, like, dang, no, like I'm the only one that can mop that floor like that. Like, can't nobody else do it. Even if I give them the recipe, I'm the only one that can do it like that. And once you get that in your mind and ingrained and you get that revelation, then you can start your journey of saying, okay, if this is where I want to go, this is what I need to do. And that's why I I shy away from certain, you know, because this is the age of classes and take a class and I'm going to teach you how to do this and teach you how to do that. That's great. That's wonderful. But you have to be careful because just because that worked for them doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Now, from a believer standpoint, you got to start from the root, right? You have to get in his face and when I say get in his face and this is another thing I'm learning um I used to say it a lot you know okay this is my devotion I get up in the morning I'm in the word I'm in his presence but devotion literally is taking time out of your day where you're actually thinking and communing with the father whether that be in your secret closet whether that be in your office whether that be in your car wherever that's you and your god's time nobody can tell you what that's supposed to look like right because that's your individual relationship that can be why you're working out because i know i've received a number of revelations so that's the start because once you do that he can begin to tell you hey this is who you are this is who i've created you to be and this is what i want you to do and as you take that walk with him it doesn't matter how long it takes He will literally strategically give you steps to take on what to do, what not to do, what to say, what not to say. And that will outline where you're supposed to be in in that season. And like you said, it didn't happen overnight. Like a lot of the revelation that I've received have literally just happened in the last year or two because I started to design my, well, not design my life, but be disciplined in certain areas of my life that allowed for that understanding to to flow like I was reading in Ephesians and I actually did a reel the other day I was reading Ephesians one the other day um and I had never really read it like that but it literally says we are God's workmanship like as infinite and as amazing as he is he took time out of his schedule to create you like that's amazing to just think about. Like my days were written out before I was even born. So if I get that revelation, like, oh snap, I'm a pretty big deal. And again, not ego, but just like legit, this is what I'm supposed to do. And it makes you look at things differently. It makes you say that, okay, not from a comparison, but God, if you did it for them, I know you can, you know, not yeah. necessarily do that specific thing for me, but operate on the same lines as that and that's kind of like where it starts and it just grows from there um again we go back to that whole timeline like we we think we're trying to get to a destination like this is where I'm trying to get and that's not it at all it's a continuous like treadmill like you're 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 going to continue growing continue evolving it's not a destination And I think even before I used to think, oh, well, when I make this amount of money in the business or when I get this amount of clients, Mm -hmm. it's going to be this. And it's like, no, because there's something always after that. And always something. Yeah. Happiness or joy you're looking from from accomplishing this goal. No. No, yeah. And that treadmill you mentioned, I would say it's one with an automatic incline up and down. Absolutely. it's um, it's one that has gone rogue, just that that random incline because you never know. I think I get I'm getting to the point where I can kind of sense when 
you know, there's yeah. going to be a shift. But, you know, it's, I think at this point, it's, what is it, what is that, that saying, you know, get comfortable being uncomfortable because it's, it's always going to be something. And I think that's in life. But also when you add in, oh, yes, I want to run a business, um, especially if you're start when it, whether you're doing it by yourself or even if it's you and a partner or a group of people, those beginning stages, even if you have all this great seed money, there's challenges that come with it because as you touched on earlier, especially if you are um, a small business or someone who it's just you, early on, you are everything. You are all the roles. Um, and even as you grow and you're able to hire and bring people on to, to, to kind of fill those different roles, at the end of the day, it's still on you. The buck stops with you because as the owner, as the manager, you are responsible um, for what gets done or what does not get done. And, and, and more important, and I know that's something that you and I have talked about in terms of as you are growing and bringing on employees or contractors, it's setting the tone, setting what is the culture of mm -hmm. my business, the culture of who I am and how do I do things and how do I how do you replicate the experience that a client has with you to make sure that if they're being serviced by someone else, that person is different, they're unique, but there is a certain essence that comes along with it. You know, I think about Chick-fil-A, regardless of where in this country you go to a Chick-fil-A, there are certain things that are consistent. Mm -hmm regardless of who it is and so that's something that I would say they have definitely done a great job of kind of creating that customer satisfaction that customer experience and that has been ingrained into the culture or just the even kind of the DNA of that company wherever you go there are certain things that you can expect even Starbucks you know there's a lot of companies that, that have that but I feel like you've touched on a lot of different things it kind of lends to this next question, but what would you, I guess, if you had to narrow it down to one lesson, what would you say is the biggest lesson that you've learned or the thing that you've learned about yourself as a business owner? Things that I've learned about myself. Um... Yikes. Things that I've learned about myself. Mm -hmm. Um, probably, you know, mom always used to tell me I'm from the show me state. Like you gotta, <laughs> you gotta show me. Um, <laughs> um, I, I, the thing that I learned about myself quickly is how small my faith was. Okay. And how Sometimes, like, let's say you're you're you are about to go to an amusement park and you have all these expectations in your head about how this amusement park is gonna be, how excited, how fun, blah, 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 blah. Right? You get there and it's completely different from what you have made up in your mind. It's hot, the lines are way too long, half the rides are broken, you didn't get to get the funnel cake, which you absolutely love, and you ended up losing your whole wallet. Right. Oh, that's not how you had it in your head because you expected for it to be a certain way because of what you imagined in your head. Mm -hmm. Going into business, I knew it was going to be challenging, but I didn't expect the level of discomfort that I have experienced, not only in business, but in my personal life, as well as just in relationships in general. And who I had to realize who I was in the moment and what I had to change to become. And what I'm also learning is what I thought was going to be a business of longevity, not to say that it's not, but this is this is going to be the thing. I realized that God was just using it to teach me some things. So I would, I would, it's okay to. Um, go into things with expectancy you know expectations is the breeding ground for miracles but at the same time don't be so attached and so married 
to your expectations or your plans, that that becomes an idol. And then God can't do what he needs to do in that situation. And so in a nutshell, be fluid. Like <laughs> there is... that was where I, yeah, I was going to say be flexible, but yes, be fluid. Cause I, yes, that part, cause it is, I think that is something I would say that I have learned and, and learning. I would say I've learned and I'm learning to apply. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna just have to get some edge control for all these different concepts so that they stay in and they keep, they don't keep just trying to you know, float away. And, but yeah, I think being flexible and I think that applies to whether it's in business or in, in life. Yeah. You know, you and literally, I, never know and David tells me all the time you take yourself way too seriously and I used to get defensive you know when he said that to me because I'm like no I don't like this is a serious matter I sounded real aka ish right there that's what to say that's what we we doing today (laughs) you you don't see you can't see did you forget but Mm. but really thinking about it it's true um I can admit that I try to and even still sometimes hold myself to a level of perfection that's not even attainable or realistic and You're not relatable Jesus. right and not relatable and once I and this literally has just happened in the last couple of months if I'm being completely honest once I took a step mm-hmm. back and be like it's okay like you can laugh it's okay you didn't necessarily make that deadline or you didn't you weren't able to do X, Y, Z, like you're human. You're not a superwoman, And I think that should be a theme that is just resonating throughout the earth. Women, black women in general, we are not superhuman. We hurt, we cry, we get tired, we get overwhelmed. Give yourself a break. Like be kind to yourself. We're always so concerned about giving to other people and making sure they're okay. Like I'm not okay. You know what I mean? So (laughs) just be honest with yourself and understand that even in certain relationships, like, you know what? I I just don't have the capacity. I don't have the know-how to deal with you today. And not even from a rude or mean, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to wake up. And I forgot where it was. I think it might've been on Instagram or something, but just waking up and putting on clothes today, it was an accomplishment. And that's a real place. Like just the fact that I washed my cooch today was an accomplishment because you and never I know. And put on a bra. And put on a, listen, that's, 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 that's hard right. sometimes. And so it's like really just realizing everybody is in a different space in their life. There's struggles that people are battling on a day-to-day basis that you literally have no idea about. So just giving grace to not only them, but to yourself and being the, and the fact that I was deployed in Afghanistan and literally people were dying all, all around me, half the stuff we go through is not a life or death situation. It can wait. It can wait. I, I'd say 75%. It might be 85, to be completely honest. Like yeah, it can and- wait. <laughs> No, yeah. And then that is, I would say when you were talking about the strong, you know, the strong black woman, I think, or just recent, I've heard it a few times, but just recently I saw a video where Taraji P. Henson was talking about that essentially, like we need to retire that, stop saying that because saying or putting that out that we're strong, you know, the strong black woman, it essentially gives others an excuse to, th- or kind of, oh, well, then you don't hurt. You don't do this. You don't need that. You don't. And actually, no, I feel all, I feel all the things. All of it. Times 10. <laughs> all of it. And I am, I think, I'm trying to think, that I, I'm tired. I am tired of that trope, so to speak. And I think, collectively as a community we are tired as a society we are tired um specifically i really only speak for america because that's where i live where most of my time has been spent in america um but this even just thinking that in the midst of this pandemic the expectation was we are going to continue and we are going to operate as though nothing has changed although everything a global pandemic so oh okay you know what we, well we can't be in person we okay hold up 
send everybody laptops, <laughs> send everybody this, make sure they got an internet connection because we can't stop. And, and I know there were some people who they did get a break initially. I honestly, because the work that I was doing at the time was going to be remote anyway, it, we didn't skip a beat. It was, and I didn't get a break either. Honestly, I was working more <laughs> the right. first part of the pandemic than I was beforehand. And so I was like, well, when, where's my free time? But anywho, that is where I'm working on being kinder to myself. And I think some of these things we share, you know, we, we are different, but we got a lot of similarities. We did grow up in the same way. Um, and interpreted things a little differently or they've shown up or been applied differently in our lives. But I think, like you said, the, the biggest lesson overall is learning to be flexible and, and trusting the process. Um, even trusting it, even when, if you're like me, you have a tendency to want to be in control Absolutely. and know, well, when is it? I know you're going to do it, but when? But when like, and well, how? You know, okay. I know you can't tell me the exact time, but maybe, you know, the season, a day, yeah. some breadcrumbs. All part for me. Can I get a yeah. general ETA so then I can just, you know, I know it's happening, but it will calm my nerves a lot if you could give me a window so yep. then I know. But yeah, so I'm learning, you know, okay, you know what? No window, no time, just, and then it's just going, okay, right on time. Got it. That due season. Mm due season is due season is it depends i would say the equivalent of people always say an attorney would be like it depends it, de it it honestly does depend and due season depends on your commitment like i saw someone post something you know when how long does it take for preparation to meet opportunity you don't know but that even that saying you know if you stay ready you don't have to get ready right. so i don't know when I'm going to be in that room with the people who need what I have. Mm -hmm. But if I have been waiting to work on my skill, perfect my craft, to gain the knowledge, if I haven't been doing it, one, the opportunity might not ever actually present itself because it's hold up. You haven't been doing your part. You haven't been doing the work to prepare because what would really suck is you get that crazy, you know, introduction and your, or your name is mentioned in a room that you're not in. And then they follow up and you're like, well, um, or, uh, mm, see what had happened was opportunity blown is what had happened. So it's just like, and I'm saying this as much to myself as I am to those listening, it's learning to be flexible. And I feel like I, well, that's a part of this is podcast in general, but just learning to let go and trust the process and to be be kind to yourself exercise grace to yourself and those others jasmine you point you mentioned this earlier you don't know what people are going through you sometimes we're not even sure what we're going through <laughs> let alone that other part. people Absolutely. so just it's it's a lot um but give yourself the space and the grace to to acknowledge that and that if there is if you need to take the time away figure out a way to do that even if it, it may not be going to the caribbean for two weeks which would be lovely but even if it is like she was saying you know if you have a mini forest or you like nature or if there's a lake even if it has to be a puddle and you just imagine that that puddle is a big body of water. I don't, I don't know. That might be a bit stretch, but for essentially do what you need to just do. Stepping outside and getting some sunshine changes your mood. Like I noticed as you know, the weather is starting to change. It was absolutely beautiful yesterday. I think it was last Friday or something. It was absolutely beautiful here in Charlotte, just driving around. Not too much. Cause you know, gas is just daggone ridiculous nowadays. But just it's, it's stepping cool. outside and feeling the sun rays on your skin, vitamin D really does give you, you know, a, a jolt of happiness. Even just doing that for a second, break up the monotony. Shoot, if you work from home, go work at a Starbucks or one of those, I don't know if they have them in other places, I'm sure they do, but like Charlotte has different like 
lobbies or coffee shop Co-working. areas. Yeah, go work Co-working there. Places. Just do look, reflect over your the past few weeks and be like, okay, what can I change? What can I shift? Just rearrange some things, and it'll help. And go from there, and little by little, you will start to see changes. Absolutely. Well, well, Jasmine, thank thank you so much for Thanks. you know making some time for for me and for the listeners currently and in the future. Um, I do hope that you continue to implement the things that you have learned and are learning. Um, like I said, Bye. something it's don't try, just do as dad would just say, used to say. But no, I think it's like you said, even you were saying before, it's just do something each day. Even if it is, like you said, a moment of just kind of staring out at the trees and zoning out, finding some time every day of just quiet to yeah. reflect, whether that be you're praying, you're meditating, you're reading, sleeping, whatever it is, just find a few, a couple minutes every day, even if you have to, you know, spread it out throughout the day, just to make sure that you're taking care of you. But like I said, thank you for, for, for joining today. Do you have anything coming up or anything that you were, how can people find you or keep you getting all these little me. looking gems that you're dropping? Um, I actually have to do better. I don't necessarily do a whole bunch of gym dropping as much as I should on Instagram anymore, just because well, it's hard creating. Oh, no, 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 no. We're not shooting. We're not shooting ourselves. Okay, not should. Well, I just haven't been because I'm in a season of my life where transition is about to happen and it's a lot going on. Um, but if you would like to follow me, I, you can follow me on Instagram, Instagram, Instagram at at Miss Miss <laughs> Jasmine Monet, and it's. M-S-J-A-S-M-I-N-M-O-N-E. I have started spelling my name the way it's supposed to be spelled. I'm not M-O-N-A-Y. Um, Ooh, welcome that back. Is my, welcome <laughs> back to the hyphenated my, E. Yes, my actual name. Um, or on Facebook at Jasmine Monet. And um, yeah. Or I'm Salon using, 2911. Or Salon 2911 on Instagram. That's S-A-L-O-N-X-X-I-X. E-L-E-V-E-N. Um, so it's kind of where I do my hanging out. I'm on the ticker of talkers every now and then, but not really. The ticker of talkers. That is a new one. I think you just aged yourself a wee bit. It's fine. It's fine. You know, I'm getting up there. Yeah, we're good. Mm-hmm. Getting up I mean, where? Getting Let's up there. Know. Let's 34 Let's in, know. in two months. Anywho, well, thank you again. It's been lovely. Um, And thank you all for listening. If you have not already, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're watching this on YouTube, you you can listen on Apple, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, all podcast platforms. So if you, whichever form, excuse me, whichever platform you are watching or listening from, please be sure that you like, comment, rate, subscribe, all of those things. Let me know um, what you like, what you're working on, what are some areas that, you know, you're just learning to lean into the process about. Remember that regardless of what it looks like or feels like, It is all working together for your good. This is a journey and not a destination. So thank you all for listening and until next time.